Some people don't think. Or rather, I should say, some people don't think about things that don't get them money or get them, like, popularity or sex. They just don't care about important things in life. That kind of describes most people. Now, the power lines either in front of your house or behind your house, which have as much power going through them as a, a uh, full bore, old school, I think it was like 800 class locomotive, do you really think, I would like to ask you a question here, and then I'm going to tell you what the greatest minds of electrical theory who ever lived said on this topic, because we are living in an age of atomistic BS. Have you ever asked yourself the question, or have you ever questioned the notion that, that uh, you know, like a rain stick, you know, you, you roll it and the little BBs roll up and down the stick. Did you really think that there were countless trillions of electron particles rolling down the electrical lines outside, uh, you know, your house, either in front yard or backyard. Did, did you really think that those uh, metal cables were like electrical, uh, excuse me, metal conduits for the, the uh, transportation of a, 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 a charge carrying particle? Did you ever question that nonsense? No, just logically here. We're not talking about conspiracies or harebrained crackpot theories. You know, because I'm about to quote you the best minds that ever lived. People way infinitely more intelligent than you. Way more. N in including any professor that you've ever had. Did you ever question that idea? Well, I certainly did. By the way, the person that quote-unquote discovered... The principle of the quote-unquote electron, J.J. Thompson, he actually denied forever and ever that uh, the supposed postul... By the way, electron is a concept. It exists within the minds of humanity. It's written in books and articles. But it is only that. It is a concept. Same thing as leprechauns and unicorns. Now, if someone says unicorn to you, immediately a one-horned horse pops into your brain. But it's merely a concept. It has no basis in reality other than a myth. There's a mythos built up around this idea of a unicorn. It makes for great, like, fantasy movies, blah, blah, blah. Same thing with unicorns. And angels and fairies and Bigfoot and blah, 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 right? Same thing with an electron. An electron is no different than a leprechaun or a unicorn. It's a concept. Well, it's a, it's a particle that carries charge. Really? So anyway, the discoverer of the, uh, the principle of the electron, which, by the way, is a dielectric or electrostatic discharge, J.J. Thompson, he denied forever that this was a particle. He stated adamantly over and over and over again. I have all these books, by the way, that there was any such thing as a charge-carrying particle. But he was coerced into confirming that it was a particle because he was offered fame, a Nobel Prize, on and on. His name would be marked in the annals of eternity. And so he succumbed. But he denies, this is ridiculous, no such thing as, it's not a particle. Let me, you know, J.J. Thompson, by the way, but I'm going to get to Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, heavy, not, not Faraday, Steinmetz, James Clerk Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside. These are the people that uh, created uh, the entire basis of all current electrical understanding. James Clerk Maxwell, Charles Proteus Steinmetz. While Tesla invented the AC engine, it's actually uh, uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz that made it work and work efficiency. Efficiently. Um, Nikola Tesla, in a 1928 interview, this is a real interview, on the whole subject matter, in fact, Dr. Nikola Tesla holds the views that are startingly, uh, startingly original or odd. He disagrees with the accepted atomic theory of matter. By the way, when we say atomic theory, we're talking about atomistic. Atomic, atom, this is atomism, Okay. Because Mother Nature does not, is not a cross-eyed uh, crack whore with a bag of magic particles. Mother Nature doesn't work off particles. Works off fields, field pressure, pressure mediation. Nikola Tesla does not agree with it. He does not believe in the existence of an electron as pictured by modern science. This is in a 1928 interview. To, uh, and here we quote Tesla. To account for its apparently small mass, science conceives of the electron as a hollow sphere, a sort of bubble. Such a bubble could uh, exist in a medium as a gas liquid because its internal pressure is not altered by deformation. But suppose by the internal pressure, an electron due to the repulsion of electrical masses, the slightest conceivable deformation must result in the destruction of the bubble. 
not just to mention another improbability. Article is from a famous prophet of science who looks into the future. Um, by the way, I can get to describing how an electron microscope works here in a second, since she because that's always the question. She goes, "What about what about an electron microscope work?" It's actually very simple. My ideas regarding the electron are at variance, this is Tesla, with those generally entertained today. I hold that it is a relatively large entity carrying a surface charge and is not an elementary unit or particle. When the, quote, electron leaves an electrode of high potential in a high vacuum, it carries an electrostatic charge many times greater than a normal. Tesla denied that there was any such thing as a charge-carrying particle or an electron. Now this is Einstein. I have absolutely no love for Einstein. This is Einstein on electrons in his work Relativity, Random House Publisher, 1916. In theoretical treatment, this is basically where even Einstein, the dope that he was, postulated that the premise of a charge-carrying particle is absurd bullshit. Theoretical treatment of these electrons were faced with the difficulty of electrodynamic theory by itself, unable to get account for their natures, since electrical masses constituting an electron would necessarily be scattered under the influence of their mutual repulsions. Yeah, that's actually a really wise statement. So here's Einstein proving that even a broken clock is right twice a day. So he makes an intelligent observation that the premise of a charge-carrying particle is absurd BS. Unless there are forces of another kind operating between them, the nature of which has hitherto remained obscure to us, and no such force has ever been postulated or even forwarded since he wrote that. Here we go with uh, Walter Russell. To describe an electron as a ne negatively charged body is equivalent to saying that it is an expanding contracting particle. There is no such th condition in nature as a negative charge. He's correct. The only thing that exists in nature is charge and discharge. Nor are there negatively charged particles. Charge and discharge are opposite conditions, such as filling and emptying, or compressing and expanding. There's Walter Russell's extremely obvious, intelligent observation of the notion of a charged particle. Um, corpuscles. Here we go on Eric Dollard's uh, the description of electron. J.J. Thompson considered uh, the development of the ether atom ideas of Mr. Faraday in his electronic corpuscle, this indivisible unit. One corpuscle terminates on one ferratic tube of force, and this quantifies as one coulomb. This corpuscle is not an electron. It is a constituent of what is today known correctly as an electron. Thompson relates to 10,000 corpuscles per electron. In this view, they have taken, uh, been taken by Crookes and J.J. Thompson and Nikola Tesla. The cathode ray is not electrons, but actually corpuscles of the ether, or di dielectric or electrostatic discharges. Um, there is no rest mass to an electron. It is uh, given here that an electron is no more than a broken holdfast. You know what a holdfast is? Holdfast is like a strap that holds stuff onto stuff, like the straps that hold something onto a flatbed truck. A broken holdfast. The easiest way to think of an electron is that if I pulled a rubber band back and snapped it on your face, and we call that an electron, that is what an electron is. It is the re release of electrostatic energy. But uh, the electrical um, energy that is transferred to that is uh, what we have quantified incorrectly and unintelligently as an electron particle. There's no such thing as electron particles. It's absolute, absurd uh, bullshit and extreme. Here we go with Charles Proteus Steinmetz. Far more intelligent than you, all your brothers and sisters, and all your family, uh, back to the tree-swinging days. If you don't know who Charles Proteus Steinmetz is, you don't know much. The uh, AC generator, while invented by Tesla, 90% of its perfection came from Charles Proteus Steinmetz. We said, well, Tesla came up with the AC generator. Yeah, but he didn't at all perfect it to, you know, would make it usable. Steinmetz did. And his math is incredible. Some of his math formulas are over 20 pages long. Here's Charles Proteus Steinmetz. Unfortunately, to a large extent, in dealing with dielectric fields and the prehistoric conception of electrostatic charge, the electron on the conductor still exists. In other words, this absurd idea. This is way back in the day. Not only does it still exist, it's even more reinforced. And by its use, destroys the analogy between the two components of the electrical field, the magnetic and the dielectric. This makes the consideration of dielectric fields unnecessarily complicated. See, all the modern science, what it has done, it has quantified this abstraction. An electron is a concept created by man which has no basis in reality. 
We think of a leprechaun, we think of a little tiny person wearing a green suit in our head. We think of a unicorn. These are concepts. They have no basis in reality. Leprechauns, electron, electrons, unicorns, these are concepts created by man that have no basis in Mother Nature, not in reality. Um, yeah, the idea of electricity is the flow of electrons in a conductor was regarded by Oliver Heaviside, one of the greatest minds of electrical theory who ever lived. Much of modern electrical uh, theory and understanding came from Oliver Heaviside. This is his statement. Oliver Heaviside considered this electron particle a quote-unquote psychosis. This encouraged Heaviside to begin a series of writings. Um... Yeah, Dr. Stephen Biller. Electrons is a separate, distinct entity. does not really exist. These are merely bumps in something called a field. A very intelligent statement, of course. Um, you can't say that stretching a trillion rubber bands nailed to the floor and releasing them or breaking their force lines is the flow of electrons. Um, the discharge is a terminal movement in systems of inductance or dielectric capacitance. There are no discrete particles in the universe, and sun, certainly none that merely... Uh, mediate charges, discharges, and magnetism. You know, the notion of an electron particle has no basis in reality, absolutely none. Um, by the way, anybody always comes up with the notion, well, what about scanning electron microscope with the SEM? And it's really easy to actually explain how electron microscope works. By the way, you know when they stick in like bugs and insects and like strawberries and crap like that? Those all go uh, through something called a, uh, a sputter coater. The sputter coater uses an electrical field, an argon gas, and all the little pieces like the little insects and whatnot, they're sputter coated in uh, atomic layers of, uh, literally, atom sprays of gold. Like, literally, it is actual paint that is nothing other than pure atomic level gold. And this is what actually goes into the electron chamber. In other words, all living tissue and whatnot, if it's metal, it doesn't need to be coated. But all uh, living tissue, bugs, insects, yada yada, stuff like that. Uh, crystals, you know, sometimes they look at mineral, mineral layers. These go in and uh, they're, they're sputter coated and then they go into the, uh, the uh, quote unquote uh, chamber where they're scanned and they're scanned by a dielectric discharge and the reflectance of that dielectric discharge is uh, what, uh, in, in very simple terms, is how the electron microscope works. But they're not little electron bombarding samples. It's really, really important, the fact that, like, when they stick an insect in an electron microscope, they're coated with gold. You can see images of this on Google if you want. They're sputter-coated with a super fine layer of gold, and that gives them a dielectric reflecting surface for the uh, electrostatic uh, longitudinal bombardment to occur to reflect off of, which is then scanned and imaged in the electron microscope. So an electron microscope works off dielectric discharges. It has nothing to do with bombardment of electron particles. There you go. I don't care whether you believe that statement or not, but you will have to be forced to admit in your own mind, because, and I include myself in this as well, you're not that smart compared to Tesla, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, uh, Oliver Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell. These were the greats of electrical theory. And all of these people, far, far more intelligent, each one of them, than you and me and, whoops, <laughs> and, you know, way more intelligent. These are the god godfathers of electrical theory. They, they said the, the notion of an electron particle or a charge-carrying particle was BS. So if you think you're smarter than them, whatever you think of me, I don't give a damn. If you think you're smarter than them, then you are so mentally delusional you are you're mentally delusional because they are smarter than you and they are correct there's no such thing as a charge carrying particle all of these things are concepts dreamt of in the minds of atomists we live currently in an age of atomism physicalism everything is a particle we grew up on this shit star trek star wars oh we gotta turn on the graviton array captain i mean we've got a we've got a uh uh what, what is it uh a tachyon particle problem. We have a... This is a <laughs> oh, God. You know, it's like quantum mystery particles. We have quantum gluon particles attacking the ships. Or, you know, we grew up on that crap. We really think that Mother Nature is just this crazy crack whore 
with just like a giant bag of mystery magic particles and everything that goes on in the universe is bumping particles even if they're not part of any experiment ever 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 done and that's just BS because nature doesn't work that way common sense even if you don't have an education common sense would tell you you know the universe can't work that way because that's some crazy shit <laughs> If you like these videos, you can always make a donation. Tell me to jump off a cliff. I don't give a damn either way. I prefer one over the other, but you are not smarter than Tesla, Steinmetz, and Heaviside. You definitely are not. And neither am I. Thank you so much for watching.